Alright, here's another one. Another curve. This says, uh, uh, this is, this either has to do with, um, service overseas. It could be a mission group or it could be military. But this is give you an idea. So they arrive. They're real excited about arriving over there. Then reality sets in. What? There's no indoor toilets? <laughs> you know, you're going through this, this, this service thing, right? And then they get used to that. And then there's acceptance. But it's not as exciting as they, as they first thought. It's not as romantic, right? And then over a period of time, they're getting tired of that. So the months overseas, you can see this, this cycle happening, right? Right? And so this cycle kind of stretches out and, and it kind of comes more to equilibrium. Now you can apply this in different ways. Think about, I, I apply it, I'm going to add some things that the authors were not talking about, but the way I can see this working. If you threw a pedal, pebble in a pond, you have a rippling effect. The, the effect gets wider and, sh and, and um, not as much height and depth or not as much swell as it goes further out. If you throw a pebble of change into your organization, the people most affected with it will see the splash. The people further out they deal with will see the big wave. And as you get further away from that part of the organization, you'll see a ripple effect. Okay? So, can you, can you envision that? The ripple effect, as you throw the pebble in that department, there'll be the big splash, and then if you can pick, take your way away from, take yourself away from that, and over time, they'll experience something like this, where that splash is. Oops, you know, and then they'll like that. So, so every time you make a change, it's going to have an effect. And it's not always related to personality. Sometimes it's related, we've got to find the right people to do this. And that's effort and time and, and money and, and it takes away from your productivity because you got lots of things to do. Finding people is just, you know, one small part of your whole group's effort, right? And you got to deal with all kinds of things. So now, so that's kind of what to expect. Does that make sense? So you're getting all kinds of things you can use and maybe apply. You can apply it in different ways. But, okay, now I ask you a question. If we could made, if we looked at the butterfly model and compared it to this model, that's kind of a negative change, right? And, and it's really more of the effects than positive or negative. But in this case, it kind of shows the negative because this is morale. But we could actually do the same curve with just the effect, just positive or negative. It doesn't matter. The effect will change too. So I like to think of it as coming to equilibrium, even if it's not a negative thing, if it's a positive change, you still have that effect, because the more you give somebody, the more they expect to get. The, the more changes you have on your phone, the more they expect to have the changes on their phone the next time. The more you give, and it's not a bad thing, it's just that we are continuously changing. Does that make sense? Our desires are comp continuously changing. You give me more. I guarantee that what I was would accept in a car when I first got a car is a lot different. And, and not necessarily me because I'm kind of, I like simple things. But people now expect the car to do everything. I want to push a button and, and get a satellite feed from somebody that knows exactly where I am and what the situation is, can read my vital signs in the car and tell me whether I need to go to the hospital or not. <laughs> Who would have thought of that? 20 years ago. Sure, it's something. I remember when I was going through the engineering school, um, one of my professors said, uh, Ford's coming out with, uh, they, they want to have a smart system in the car to tell you where you are. And I said, how can we do that? So we're brainstorming on how to do a GPS type situation in a car. Most cars don't have GPS, they just have a, a, a disc that, that reads the disc. And you have to update that disc to get the latest roads. So it's not GPS. It's just it counts, you know, mathematically where where you're going. But but here my solution was that well what about if you went to the gas station and you could buy a cassette you know, was, they didn't have disc, a cassette, and on the cassette it had a map for that city. You just plug it into this little computer and it'd read the map and, and, and that would be the city and it'd go through the computer and everything else. And he said, that's an excellent deal. No one's ever thought... 
<laughs> Can you imagine how far away that is from today? I mean, as a general concept is all I gave, all I had to give, but it wasn't anywhere near what we can do today, right? And uh, and so, but but can you imagine just the thought process of how what it took to get here, and and where you are today? Our kids are going to look back on it and say, "Did you know that they used to have to put uh, a plug into the computer to to get information?" <laughs> It's, it's, it, and, and they had to look at a screen, you know, and other things. And all we have to do now is tap our glasses and it's there. Or, or whatever. Or put on these things. Or, the, or, or a holographic image or, or whatever. But, you know, what we can see today is not what we're going to see.